Okay, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I mean, we can crank it up too. Perfect. Um, can we bring that light in, Skosh? The light. Uh, what's up, everybody? Are we going live? Yeah, we are live. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you? We're still fixing our lights. We got all kinds of craziness happening right now. Happy Wine Wednesday. Wine Wednesday. Cheers Thank you. Cheers. You. Thank Thank you, you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Uh, myself, Amy, Osterhouse. Right. To you, but to the what? world, it's smart. <laughs> That's signed, documented. I'm not, I'm not, it's legal. It's been 10 years, man. It's been 10 years. Well, not 10 years. It's almost. Almost. Almost okay. 10 years. Oh, I, I should know this better. Okay. How are you? We have a great show today. We're super excited um, because we have a fantastic guest on, yes. uh, Buddy Blastro. He is uh, known as the cake boss. He's such a stud. He's such a, he's a hard worker. What I love about Buddy is that he's a hard worker. He believes in family so much uh, and he brings his family into his work as well. And um, I think at the heart of it, you know, they always say like the heart, you know, is around like the kitchen, right? And um, with Buddy, I think, you know, the, the heart is, is around the kitchen and the family, which is fantastic to see. And he displays that lots of times on his show, one of his many shows. So we're also going to cook one of his dishes as well. Cornell and Davia are going to cook one of his dishes. No, no. we're not cooking his dishes, oh, but we're, we're eating his delicious cake. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Look Here at we go. this gorgeous. Did, did I do a good job? Look at um, this. Wait. Cornell did not do Look this. At, hold on. The reveal. Dun, 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 dun. Rainbow wow, cake. look like at that. How stunning that is. I mean, look at those beautiful layers. I know, that would be difficult. I've so never eaten a rainbow cake if before. you're a baker out there, this is the show for you because we're going to be talking all about yes. baking. And um, we have um, some really special news too, which I don't want to get too far ahead of, buddy, but we started you know, getting some guests for the future. And do you know who our guest is for next week? Um, well, we all know him from a very famous movie. In the 90s? Early 90s? I know. I want to say but like late 80s, early 90s. Nobody can guess. Nobody can guess around here. Um, first name, Ralph. First name, Ralph. Macho. Nobody? Ralph Macchio. Yeah. Come on. The Karate Kid yeah. is coming yeah. on the show. Oh, the Karate Kid's coming yes. on. I mean, how fun is that? Right? It's on my song. Hey, hey, right. When I take a right turn, what do I say? He's like, let's take a Ralph Macchio. Yeah, take a Ralph Macchio. Or not to so, be confused anyways. with the Lou Diamond Phillips. But anyway, that's another thing. Yeah. So um, that's next week. That's but next week. we have a lot of fun stuff packed in the show today, so we want to get to it. Uh, Buddy's coming on here in a second. He's going to talk all about baking and sorts. And then um, we also have some wonderful food that Cornell and Davi are going to cook up. Yes. So let's chat with them really quick. Okay. Uh, Cornell, Davi, how you guys doing? We're doing just... Fabulous. Thank you. Here we go. So <clears throat> I don't want to keep Buddy waiting there too long. Um, so for so tonight, we ended up doing uh, something nice for the summer. Um, some chicken breast that is uh, marinating here in some olive oil and, uh, and, le and lime juice and um, some shallots that we uh, uh, sliced up. And that's going to go in a broiler here in a second as uh, we're having an interview with, uh, with Buddy. And then with that, you know, we're going to serve peaches. Peaches are in, uh, in the season um, right now. Um, there's been apricot stew and stuff. So things have been really going fast this year. Um, and then along with that, we're going to serve it with some herb. Uh, plain that yogurt. rainbow cake. That's going to be hard to make. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that rainbow cake? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, and then, uh, and then we're also going to have a side plate here um, for our, so tonight we have some guests outside on the patio, um, and we're going to do a bruschetta, burrata, um, and a peach um, plate for them, served with a little bit of, uh, um, oh, what's it, basil, and, and basil. also on them, pine nuts. Pine nuts. Um, yes, so that's that's right. Right. So there's, there's a couple of twists here. Yeah. So the, the peach, uh -huh. I ended up... Um, sauteing a little bit in the pan. So I wanted to get a little bit more pop out mm -hmm. of the color um, and also caramelize uh, the flavors. Yeah. And then uh, the roasted uh, pine nuts, um, it's gonna go with the salad, but we're also gonna add it with the chicken. Oh. So that is something that was mm -hmm. not in the original. Okay. Right. No. 
So okay. we're just playing rock. Nice. All right, yeah. so that's what we're doing. I love that we're having a little bit of, uh, that's what you're supposed to do, right? That's Change right. it up. And you could fail miserably, or you could come out on top, and it'd be amazing, which I think you're going to be amazing. But a lot of times cooks look at recipes, and it's sort of a blueprint, and then you make it your own. Yeah, right. Exactly. So exactly. it sounds like, you know, you're always good at making it your own, and putting little your little class. Cornell twist yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. And then don't forget about the wines. Yes. Which ones are we going to We do. Uh, we have our Pinot Gris tonight, mm -hmm. and then we have our Chard Select. And, um, you know, going through the ingredients and everything with the peaches, a um, little bit of sweetness, acidity, the yogurt, um, the chicken, everything. I think, you know, the, both of them would go really, really well with it, uh, especially like the, the Chard C. Um, Likely, likely oat, um, you know, like the, with the yogurt, that, that full, full mouth feel. Um, I think everything, you know, the fruitiness, the acidity, everything with both of these wines is going to be awesome. I'm really, really excited to try both these dishes with both of these wines. Great. Yeah. You know what? As, as I, I can hear my pager a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> is that your pager? I, I think oh, it's. Like, I think it's <laughs> Don't mind. Uh, all right, so that's what's happening with these guys. Um, speaking of, we're going to go outside to my brother Todd before we get on the horn with Buddy. Um, Todd, take it away. You know, Cornell stole my joke of the whole pager going off, so I'm not too excited about that. But anyway, a beautiful day in Traverse City once again, and just bringing these great experiences to everybody. We have uh, some great uh, wine club members, some great people involved with us sitting out here on our deck. Uh, We're opening this up for 10 people, however we want to put that together. Um, two groups of five, groups of twos, whatever you want to do. Uh, email jill at bonobowinery.com. And we'd love to have you. This is your chance to have Cornell cook for you, some great dishes, and you get to ask some great questions. So later on, these guys are going to ask some questions for you, and um, we'll just have that great experience that Bonobo is all about. Do we lose? There are groups of people out there right now, um, and the cool thing about it is that uh, we are. Can you maybe hit that? Yep. Uh, the cool thing about it is that you know because we've always said to guests like, "Hey, you should try this dish that Amy and I get the." The luxury yes, of having. So spoiled. So it's spoiled. So now we're going to open it up to 10 people, whatever. So your party's 10. Call us if you have a party of five. If you're just by yourself, call us. We'll fit you in somewhere. But it's only up, open to 10 people. So we're doing this every Wednesday. Uh, we got Ralph Macho next week. We have Sunday Anderson from Food Network coming on and a lot of other chefs as well. And in two weeks, we have the cheese lady. And two weeks, we have the cheese lady. That's right. Cheese yep. tasting. Cheese pairing. Um, and um, yeah, and beyond that, I mean, we got a lot of fun stuff happening. So we're gonna open it up now to our very, very, very special guest. Um, and again, if you have questions, you can type them in, Jill will connect to you if you wanna ask one of those questions. Um, right now, the famous, the world renowned, the one, the only, the cake boss. The cake boss. <laughs> What's going Hello. on, buddy? Hello. How are we doing, guys? How's everybody How doing today? So good to see you, my friend. Cheers. Oh, great to see you guys. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. How are you Thank and you. where are you? Um, right now, well, I'm doing really well. Um, I'm at my shore house right now and enjoying the, the Jersey Shore. Um, one of my favorite spots to be down all summer long. And, um, you know, I'm here with my family and we're enjoying. We actually had that little bit of a tropical storm yesterday, and I'd say probably like 60% of the state lost power. We were lucky enough not to lose power here. Um, wow. And yeah, it was, it was nuts, but, um, you know, just living a dream, man, you know, really trying to work and be healthy and, you know, try to get through this COVID crisis, you know? Yeah, I know. And that's what I wanted to ask you. I mean, there's so many things, obviously, that you're known for right and you have so many shows um you, you but you really you started out which i love your story because you know carlos bake shop that started what like 110 years ago yeah 1910 it opened wow i mean that's crazy and so it's like the fact that and you're pushing this bake shop and again you're so family oriented 
I know your dad was the one who took it over, right? Is that correct? Yeah. So my dad bought it in 1963. So my mm. dad worked for Mr. Carlo, who owned it from when it opened until, um, you know, until he retired. And my dad was working there and he was 26 years old and he said to Mr. Carlo, I really want to buy it from you. And Mr. Carlo gave him the loan and everything. And he was happy to see the business go to someone who was passionate about it. Actually, Mr. Carlo had a son that um, was a rocket scientist for NASA. So he wanted to become a baker. And back then, usually the son followed in what the father's footsteps were. Right. Um, and then, you know, I, I've met Mr. Carlo's son. And he said, man, what you've done with my dad's bakery, he would have been so proud. So, you know, not only do I feel like I'm making m me and my family proud, but also making Carlo's family because originally it was his bakery. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so cool that, like, that that you guys literally went, you know, down the road, there's so much family involved. And I know your, 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 your family's involved, your immediate family. But I did hear a story that because of COVID, like, you know, your workers were unsure, which we deal the same stuff here at Bonobo. Like, at the winery, like, you know, if somebody doesn't feel right to work, we're like, okay, that's all right. You can stay home, but you still have to try to run a business. And so did you put your kids to work? Is that right? I did. I, I, I had to because I put my kids, my my uh, wife, my sisters, my nephews and nieces, you know, when when the COVID really first hit, everybody was scared. Nobody wanted to work. And we had orders. We had things that we had to facilitate. So you know, they weren't really doing any real online learning. You know, that that doesn't always right. go over well. So. <laughs> My, my wife and kids and, and the whole family came with me every day to the bakery. And we worked not only so hard, but so many hours. It was such a great bonding experience. You know, it really was um, exciting. So it, it's good for them to kind of, well, it's good for them to know that when the chips are down, your family's always there no matter what, right? Yeah. And I, I called my wife in the middle of the day and she's, she immediately, she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Because she knows when I go to work, like I go into my zone and then I just have to do what I have to do. And she's like, what is he calling me in the middle of the day for? And, and um, I said, hon, I said, I, I think I really need you and, and everybody to come to work. And, <laughs> and she's like, what? You're kidding me. I'm like, well, look, there's nowhere else to go anyway. I'm like, what are you, you going to do? You might as well leave the house a little bit and come to the factory. <laughs> and uh, we did. We worked as a family. Um, yeah, it, it's funny because, you know, I started this winery with my brother. And so we have, you which, know. We, which, by the way, congratulations. And I'm um, tasting the wine here. Really, really good. Well, we thank you. What are you having right now? Right now I'm tasting the Pinot Grigio. Oh, so you like? Really, really good. It's got a nice snap to it. And um Sweet, not too overpowering. Yeah. I'm getting really good citrus notes in it. Really good. Yeah, we, we um, you know, we that, that Pinot Gris is definitely one of the uh, summertime favorites, you know, right now. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a little bit lighter and, um, you know, it has that, it, it really shows what we're capable of making up here. You know, in Traverse City region, it's a great fruit bearing region. And, um, you know, we decided, obviously, when we started this winery, we weren't the first, but, you know, the history goes that somebody started a winery up here 40 years ago, and we just followed suit. So here we are, is how we landed up. But what I was going to ask you is that, you know, my brother and I started this, uh, you know, 12 years ago. So working with your family, it always seems like on your show, you and your family are very yeah. well connected. And I know, you know, it's a big Italian family. You're, I think you, your dad came over from Sicily, correct? Yes, my dad came over from from Sicily. Yeah, so I mean, you guys like you, you really I mean, that family appreciation. You guys have that in space. Is that is that true? Because I'll tell you some stories maybe later off the air about me and my brother, which is <laughs> sometimes we don't always agree on things. <laughs> I, I got to tell you honestly, when I'm not working, I'm with my family. Like my sisters. So every weekend, if we're down the shore, there's thirty or forty people here. And 30 or 40 people who are my immediate family. Like it's my sisters and their kids. So it's not even like we were even scared with COVID because how many people could you have outside? You know, it was like yeah. up to 50 people. 
but it was really just my media family, you know? Um, and and we, we have a big family where, you know, five, five kids with spouses, everybody's got kids, you know, and that's just kind of how it is. And if we're home, like, you know, back North of Northern New Jersey, we, every Sunday we wind up having, you know, Sunday dinner at my house and the whole family comes over. So, you know, we, we create the, that bond and that memory. And I have so many people who come, you know, for the day or whatever. And they're like, man, do you know how special this is that you have this relationship and this bond? Yeah. And, and besides the fact we're business partners too. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I truly feel blessed and I, and I, I got to give the credit to my parents, you know, my parents, I lived a great life growing up. I had a great family life, me and my sisters, you know, the way we grew up, the times we had, the moments we tr treasured together that when I met my wife, I said, you know, I, look, I want to have a lot of kids. I said, I, you know, and I got four. So um, <laughs> I, I want to have like that big family and see that connection. And um, I, I'm just really, I, I'm truly blessed. I, I have to say. Yeah, well, you're always so so sweet. And every time, you know, I see you, because obviously, you know, you and I see each other sometimes on Rachel Ray. I feel like Absolutely. that's where our paths cross the most. And, <laughs> and um, you know, when we go on shows. Um, okay, tell, tell buddy, me. Oh, I actually, have, you. So, buddy, I uh, got this book. And oh, cool. I started reading it. And I love to study recipes and stuff. And I love that you are so family oriented. And you said, you know, when you were family, gets together you bring it to the next level and i'm curious what that next level is well the next level is is you know whatever we're doing i mean look when you come to my house there's always a ton of food you know and and right now we're in the jersey shore and and again here i'll, I'll take you guys on a walk with me here let's see okay. if I can walk, walk us around here i'll show you i'll show you kind of what we do here all right I'll show you outside so I'm gonna come outside here, and this is. Oh wow! The, oh, look at so that. We're in the water, and, and we got some serious cooking going on in here. This is oh our my outdoor gosh, kitchen. What a spread! So that we, we're cool. always cooking and entertaining, and you know, oh pizza gosh. oven or smoker or whatever it is we're trying to do here. But yeah. you know, it's always centered around food. Nothing brings families together like food, and we wind up um, loving it. I mean, you know, we come over here to the bay, and sometimes my wife will yell at me. She's like, you didn't tell me all these people are coming over. And, and she's like, I don't got food. And I would say to the kids, go into the, go into the bay over here and pick up a bucket of clams. We'll make linguine and clams quick. And that's just how we live. Wow. <laughs> Wow, well, they do right. take it to the next level. Look at that spread. Yeah. You got more chairs than a restaurant wow, over there. You're so right on the, on the ocean. So, How beautiful. And, and we get the and we get a beautiful sunset every night. So How gorgeous. Are you guys boaters? Are you big boaters? Yeah, well, I'm more of a fisherman. So okay. me and my one son are really into fishing and we do a lot of offshore. So, you know, we go like 100 miles offshore. We go for tuna and different things like that. We go for flukes, stripers. We catch crabs. Everything off, of, well, you know, all the time over here. So um, we just really love being down here, you know, smelling the, the, the ocean air and being here and hanging out on the beach and doing different things. Um, we love it down here. It's like a little slice of paradise. Yeah, you must try to get down there all the time. I know, you know, obviously... Here in Michigan, we're, we're trying to get on the water as much. Who are those guys? Yeah. What's, are those your kids? Oh, my kids. <laughs> Say hi, boys. Yeah. <laughs> they're, going on a, they're going on the Wave Runners. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Buddy, I have so many questions for you, and we only have so yeah. much time left. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know you were, you were in a movie, Billy Bob Joe. Is that true? Billy Bob Joe, was I? I don't know. I don't, so that, that's I don't what I read. Were you not? Were you ever in a movie where you had like speaking lines? Because I saw you in Impractical Jokers. And yeah, I was on Impractical Jokers. But how Actually, are those guys? Sal, those guys Sal, are amazing. They are so good. I was with Sal and Q the other day on um the, we did a, an event for Mariano Rivera. 
And well, you want to hear a funny story, right? Yeah. So I've never golfed in my life. Like, like literally, I golfed one time, which was for Cake Boss, and I hit like one hole, and that was it. <laughs> so the other day, Mariano Rivera calls me. He says, buddy, he's a friend. He says, can you come to my event? And it's a golf event. I said, Mariano, I'd love to come. I'll hang out. But I don't play golf. So he's like, no, I'll just, you know, come. I'm like, all right, I'm going to bring some cake. So I sit down, right? I bring the cake. He comes over and he says, buddy, my foursome canceled. He said, so you and your brother-in-law <laughs> and your guy, you're playing. And I'm like, well, I, A, I'm in jeans. Like, I'm, I'm not even ready to play golf. B, I don't have clubs. I don't know how to play. Don't worry. We got it all for you. And now I'm playing golf with, you know, the greatest clothes of all time. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, amazing. And, the, and I was getting golf lessons from him. So that was my Monday. So that's a, that's a pretty <laughs> delicious Monday. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, I think we're going to go to a couple questions. I know I had a few more. Can you give me like um, for the bakers out there? Um, what is your like go to hack? Like when you're baking, like what is something that I don't know? What's like what, what's the one thing you can't? How can you teach Carter? Because he's not I'm really not, a chef, but no. it would be awesome <laughs> to have something that you feel comfortable. That, that's what I was getting to. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen, when it comes to baking, baking is a science, right? So yeah. you have to measure the ingredients right. It's not, cooking is like, oh, I want a little more salt, a little this, a little that, spicy. That doesn't work in baking. It's got to be exact measurements of what you want to do. Um, I think that people, you know, when they bake, I think sometimes like my kids are guilty of they never let the cake cool down enough before they put the icing on it. So it okay. always melts, right? So okay. yeah, <laughs> all right. You gotta wait. You gotta be patient. Put it in the refrigerator. Let it totally cool down because it's gonna melt, right? Right. Um, but I think if you're baking at home with kids and 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 just you know whether you're making chocolate chip cookies or whether you're icing cupcakes or whatever it is, I think it's memories that you'll create with your family, whether it be baking and cooking. I remember as a kid, I every Sunday morning I would roll meatballs with my grandma my, or my mom. And, you know, it's those memories that you'll never forget. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Buddy, I'm sorry. You just said chocolate chip cookies. And of course, like mostly I follow the recipe on the back of the chocolate chip cookie bag. But if you have any other better recipes. <laughs> I do. I mean, again, listen, a chocolate chip cookie, there's, just, there's two secrets to chocolate okay. chips. Okay. One is a, without say is to have good chocolate. But yeah. how much chocolate? Because okay. there, there is a chocolate chip cookie with too much chocolate. Because then you're not, you know what I'm trying to say? It's got to be the balance of cookie to, I mean, chocolate to dough. Yeah. And then the secret ingredient is salt. You always want to increase the salt in a chocolate chip cookie because it will bring out the butter flavor. Ooh, okay. So you'll get that like buttery snack, you know? That okay, I, I, I may just start cooking chocolate chip cookies for us now. <laughs> yes, See, now I know. Now I know. Thank you, buddy. Um, buddy, we have loads of questions. We don't have that much time. Do you mind Please. if we take a couple fan questions? Because they're do it. on Facebook Live to. and on Zoom. Uh, Jill, do you have a, are you around? Um, do you have any questions? Yeah, so actually what we're going to do is, since we've got our uh, VIP table here, we're going to go out to them. I think each table has a question for you, buddy. So we're going to go outside to Todd right now and have our VIP table that the questions. Let's do it. Okay, here we are sitting outside with uh, our first table. So we got a couple questions coming, and we have one right here. Hey, before I ask our question, buddy, I want you to know that when we moved to Brooklyn, the first Saturday, we went to your bakery because our kids were <laughs> dying to get I love your it. Cakes. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So our question is, our daughter is quite a baker. What is the best chocolate to use for a made from scratch chocolate cake? Well, usually I like to put a cocoa powder in rather than just using pure chocolate. Um, and, you know, between Calibu makes a really good one. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I lost my train of thought right there. Calibu is the one that we typically use, but, um, you know, there's so many of them. You're looking for 28% uh, fat content in the cocoa. 
So when, when you're looking, and I like the red cocoa rather than the black cocoa, because I think the red cocoa is more rich in chocolate flavor. The black just gives it that color. So sometimes you'll even do like a 80-20 splice from red cocoa, like a Dutch cocoa, to a black cocoa, which then gives you that death by chocolate, you know, chocolate color. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Learning so much right now. <laughs> Very good. I love it. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. So we, we have it. one more question over here. Please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Hi. Hey, Hi. buddy. How Chris, you doing? We're the Blanchards. So <laughs> for, first question, or I guess statement really is thank you so much for your focus on uh, on family. And I'm really nice to hear somebody say first and foremost family is paramount and critical uh we got married in october and um, we both come from great thank great you. families and and then our vows and everything was all about family so it's, it's refreshing to hear thank you um, my pleasure my question is around um have you ever thought about or considered doing a sourdough cake or croissant or something or some sort of fermented inspired flavors um, to be honest with you, I think I never really thought of it that way. I like to use it in, um, breads, like if we're making breads, but for me, I, I would probably imagine that it would work in a croissant would be I, cakes. You know, it's not it really gonna, it's not gonna, in a croissant, it would definitely, I think would take on a life of its own, you know? Sure. So. Sure. The, the, the thought was around like a, a fermented uh, icing of some sort, um, something from um, the inspiration of the, oh, what's that book you just got me with the yellow, with the orange cover? Yeah. Oh, so I'm throwing a blank on it. Sorry. <laughs> That's uh, all right. <laughs> and I wanted to offer you a, a piece of my sourdough starter if you want. It's eight years old. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> there you hey, go. listen, speaking of, 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 a, of a mother yeast, so I, I went to a bakery in Altamuda, where my mother's from, in, in Puglia, right? It's a little town, well, it's 80,000, 90,000 people, it's, but it's a small part of Italy. And every year they win the blue ribbon for the, the best bread in Italy. And I went to a bakery that had a, a mother yeast that was, they say, a thousand years old. What? Wow. <laughs> Did you get them? The oven was like a cave. You have no idea. I mean, it was do, you, do you have any, thing. and will you share it? I wish I did. I wish I did, man. They were strict oh, with that. We did old. an episode of Cake Boss about it. If you if you find it, when we were in Italy, we went to that bakery, and I made bread with them, and it was the most amazing bread I've ever had in my life. Wow. It, it's life-changing. It's life-changing. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Hey, Thank cheers. you, brother. Hey, buddy, I just want to say thank you so much for sending this deliciousness oh, over. And I'm hey, now listen, new you band. guys sent me some vino, so thank you. I appreciate it. You know that. <laughs> we are, I don't know if we're going to be able to save this uh, to eat before or after our dinner, but, you know, we'll try. Um, well, listen, man, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to see you after COVID when we get through with all this craziness and and we'll, we'll come up. visit you when we come to the East Coast. Listen, we, we'd love to. You know we love you, man. And congrats on the vineyard and, and on all your success, both you guys. So, you know, we, we, we love you. And uh, actually, it's so funny. You said you have a Ralph Macchio. Last <laughs> week, I watched a Karate Kid with my son. Because I was like, you know, there's no movies like you get. Like, they don't make yeah. good movies like that no more. Do you totally. know what I'm saying? It's Ralph, no. yeah, right. Karate Kid, Goonies, one of those. Yeah. Have you so, seen Cobra Kai, buddy? No, I haven't. It's so it's so good. good. It's, it's so on good. Netflix now, but it's like it's just so good if you grew up watching it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. But um you're so cool and such an inspiration. And we so thank you for coming on and um sending us your yummy cakes. And I actually love cooking and I can't wait to make a bunch of these recipes. Oh, you house. know what we got to do is we got to make a, a cake with wine. So you're going to send me the wine and we'll figure Ooh, out wow. how to pair it. So we'll do a that, wine cake, all right? That would be Done. amazing. Done. We okay. can easily do that. Deal. Yeah. You got it, guys. Good luck. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Stay, stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.
All right, so what a cool dude. Buddy is Thank awesome. You. Um, yeah. he's, uh, obviously he's got you are so many, oh, I, I'll stand. Need to get out oh look at that, look at oh, that, hey, hey, hey. We're, we're having, uh, you know, if we knew somebody, we're having light issues. put some blinds up, so you just put your big head in front um, of that, uh, buddy, he still doesn't know Billy Bob Joe, which is on his IMDb, well, so you I have thought, to look it up, I know, okay. uh, but big, big time bake, um, obviously Carlos Bakery and, uh, Cake Boss, which I didn't even yeah. get to ask him about Cake Boss, how he got that name. Um, cause I think there is a story behind it, but I don't know. Um, anyway, I'm going to just stand awkwardly over here yeah, like this I don't know you at all. and, um, <laughs> we now are going to, uh, start cooking we have Davi flaming and delicious again, be features. before we go to Davi, okay. um, obviously we always do a promo code for a little while. So again, if you're watching on Facebook a little bit later, the promo code is buddy 85. So if you type in Buddy85, you're going to get 25% off. 25% off your wine. Again, go to bonobowinery.com, 25% off Buddy85. And that's only going to last until, I don't know, I think it's Monday. But you, you might want to just order it now, just in case, <laughs> because that'd probably be the smart thing to do. But I think it's Monday, so that goes to um, And this amazing, I mean, this is like the most quintessential fry cake, if yeah, there totally. ever was one. And we had this shipped to our house, and our daughter was like, <laughs> I want to eat that yeah, she was cake. Not happy that we took it away from her. <laughs> no, at I was all. like, I'm going to bring you a piece, but I had no idea this beauty was inside this yeah, thing. Yeah, so. I know. So uh, we're going to tear into that here again. in a little bit. Um, I think. But we're featuring peaches, obviously. Yeah. We saw all those peaches today. We're trying to find every kind of seasonal fruit or mm -hmm. vegetable that is. That we can. That is ripe and, and ready to eat. Yeah, next week is blueberries, but this week is peaches. And yes. so, Dobby, you ready to take it away? I am. All right. So, we actually have, I actually have yours ready over there. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Um, and then, once you have a look at it, I can explain what is going on there. Okay. Um, so we likely, we likely uh, shard oh. the peaches just to, to brown them a little bit with olive oil. Bring out and the then you have your burrata, you have your prosciutto, uh, roasted pine nuts, okay. um, a little bit of salt and pepper, balsamic, okay. and virgin olive oil. Yeah. Um, wow, what a presentation. It's beautiful. This is like a beautiful mandala. <laughs> so, so we tasted the peaches ahead. Uh, and uh, uh -huh. it's really, you know, I grew up on a beach farm, so I'm very finicky about mm. peaches. Wait, like you I'm, grew up on a peach farm? Yeah. What yeah. are the peaches like here compared to your peach farm? These are really good. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, I because ours, you know, it was a it was a hot, really warm, hot, dry. I'd say almost like like Napa kind of wine, very Mediterranean, so they they suffer. Uh -huh. um, so it was a very concentrated taste, the acidity, the mm -hmm. sweetness, everything. And, and these peaches are actually, you know, they're really good for what we're doing here. And that's why I think with the wines we have here tonight, mm -hmm. that actually goes right. really, really well. Right. A um, little bit of sweetness of the peach, mm -hmm. acidity, um, you know, it's nice and lush. And then, of course, the, the meat that you have here. Yeah. yeah. Bit of savoriness for that chocolate. Mm. It's so um, good. Yeah. It's so it good, is, like a, it is a great little appetizer that's really, good. oh, what are you doing in here? Wow, you got food? Okay, <laughs> great. I have some for you as well, Bob. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's a really, I mean, it's it's light. I mean, of course, you can, you can eat everything. You can eat a lot, but I think it's a really nice light combination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of flavors in there. Now, do you like, I have to ask this, uh, since you grew up on a peach farm, do you like the peaches when they're really, when they've been sitting out for a while, or do you like when there's a little bit more firmness to them? That's kind of strange because I would always like with, because uh, we had apricots as well, yeah, pears as well, quince, almonds, but the peaches, apricots, I would always go more to the less ripe side. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just prefer a little, you know, a nice firm fruit, but more acidity compared to, you know, kind of like that's, juice and juicy. That's what I said the other day. And, and that's what you prefer. And that's what I prefer. And she got mad at me. She got mad at me for eating them. It's not right yet. No. And I said, I can like, eat it if this is what I prefer, right? Like, they need to ripen in the sunlight and the wind. She did not want me to touch it. We, yeah, we would always, um, you know, I mean, you could, in the harvest time, you can pick whatever off the tree from, yeah. 
from green to, to juice. Right. So you could really pick what you want. Um, and we used to dry them. That's, that was our big like, our oh, you goal or our thing on the farm. We would dry every garden, dry peaches and pears, and then ship it off to, like say, Del Monte. Uh -huh. um, mm. So they, they would always be really, really ripe. Mm -hmm. them because that's what they wanted to get a good quality dry fruit. But for your you know, packing and export fruit, you want something a little greener, a little, yeah, so a little firm, so it'll last. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I like things to be more on the acidic side. That's why mm -hmm. I like, like pickled stuff. Yeah. Um, can't deal with hot stuff, but like fruits, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Needs to I'm be, the needs to be more like on the acidic side. I like it just uh, dripping. Like Ryan right right right. right. Yeah, <laughs> watermelon. I'm like, come on, man, you gotta clean this up. Like this is, yeah. I, I don't, I don't really like a mess. And, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's kitchen rubble. But I like yeah. actually, <laughs> but I like bananas that are not very ripe at all. Like the yeah. minute they turn, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'd, rather, I'd, I'd rather eat my bananas <laughs> ripe, even way ripe. Uh, you know what? <laughs> it's actually supposed to be better for you, I think. Yes, that's why. Yeah, yeah they're better for baking. But well. it's a they're better for baking. Like that, that banana bread. So, um, but yes, um, and then the other dish, we do have the chicken that is is busy right now as we speak. Okay. Um, we also have peaches on that, and that's gonna be bigger chunks, just you know, seared right. or um, broiled in the in the oven, mm -hmm. and then again with the chicken. And I think that one is especially gonna be good with our short legs. Okay. Cool. Um, yes. Uh, I know I love the fact that you paired that with the shark select and the peanut green because I feel like we haven't paired anything lately with the uh, shark select. Yeah, with the yeah, shark. The the shark select. Yeah, it's, it's actually been quiet. The shark select. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's kind of the in between one. It's not not our you know full oak one. Right. Neutral oak. You still get your fruit in it, um, but you still get that little bit of oakiness, little bit of you know, the tannins and the, the greeniness on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think especially that's why it's kind of they really well with the yogurt. Uh, the yogurt. Mm -hmm. right. Is there any reason why you would go the neutral oak with the Chardonnay that we do up here versus the real heavy oak up here? We'll find that out <laughs> with, with the ninth with the nineteen coming out. Okay. But given to the the, uh, the battles we're using for that is okay. not that aggressive. Okay. Um, it'll will obviously be more oaky. But it's not going to be like your a big you know, oak bomb or something stuff. like that. No, no. no. Okay. Um, but this one, yeah, like I said, it's kind of in between neutral oak, beautiful. Um, still, the, the fruit still speaks to you. Um, the acidity still, you know, but it's nice and round, nice and creamy. And uh, yeah, um, you know, it's. I, I think it caters to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the people that really want the, the shipping style. Mm -hmm. They want the steel. They want the fruit. And then you have people that just wants the oak, the oak shot and yeah. buttery. The butter. <laughs> well, it's tough yeah. when you don't get the high alcohol in the batch with the oak right. that's going in there. You kind of set that off to get a good balance. So it's right. good to do that. When you say the high alcohol, why aren't we getting the high alcohol? Just because of the climate? Um, either way, yes. <laughs> um, you know, because our growing season is so short, okay. we can accumulate the, the, the bricks or the the, the sugar content in the grapes, you know, that of, you know, obviously it makes your alcohol. Okay. So say we harvest this at 23 bricks, okay. or hopefully 24 and up. Like in California, I mean, it's higher. Mm. So obviously they are getting higher alcohol. Okay. Uh, we could hit 14, um, 13, maybe 13 and a half, maybe, maybe 14. Mm. Um, but then you also want to go, you want to want to make it right so the alcohol doesn't seem hot. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, you can taste sometimes like it's it's it seems better, it seems hot, um, and then you know it's it's a little high alcohol. Right. Because you got you want to get that balance. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's where right the you know the, the good oak program comes in. Um, you know the winemaker you know playing with tannins, blending stuff that's uh, um, softening it up, finding agents. Um, mm -hmm. You, know, you want to get that balance right. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's not. I mean, high alcohol is if it's if it's if it's out of whack, it's you don't know, enjoy it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so that's why I mean, you can get away with making stuff like Riesling that's like 10% alcohol and delicious. Mm -hmm. Um, it almost drinks too fast, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's all you know, it balances everything. I mean, you see, with like cakes and food and everything, it's it's balanced. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, if anything is out, it's you know, it's you you can taste it now. I wish we knew how much sugar was in a glass of wine. 
You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not always that. No, but I'm curious because I read the labels of pretty much everything yeah. I buy. Yeah. And it would be interesting to be like, oh, this glass has 15 grams of sugar oh. um, <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, in general. Like, I just yeah. don't have any concept. Of if, it's, if it's fermented dry, there's, there's going to be a little bit left. You know, that's always, you know, nothing. Well, what do you mean by a little bit? As we talk so, so we say so we say like like people like like to throw around you know like what's the highest what's the highest and then everybody wants to know in the tasting room hey what's the highest it's mm -hmm. like well, why is that so important mm -hmm. um, the yeast if, if if you let it just run its course yeah. it's it's gonna leave some sweetness there it's gonna leave mm -hmm. some some sugar it's gonna it's gonna take the glucose first then put the other way around but. Mm -hmm. um, Stuff that's like late August. Yeah. That's gonna high sugar, like stuff. late Riesling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you're good. We're good. <laughs> no, I know. We are we are health conscious here. I know. We're not yeah. making ice wine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Um, well, speaking of all that wine yes. talk. Yes. Um, let's talk about next week with okay. Ralph Macchio. Did you yeah. know who that was? That, yes. This is his. This is Todd's like. This is, uh, yeah, my brother's era. Um, Todd is, Todd's totally 80s. What was your favorite? Can you guys, maybe at home, what's your favorite line from um, Friday Kid? Don't steal my Don't. wax on, wax off. I mean, that was a good one. As soon as you said Ralph Macchio, we already got someone yell, sweep the leg, obviously. Sweep the leg, Johnny! <laughs> yeah, that's sweep that's the funny. leg! No, oh, he's put him in a body bag. Oh, uh, grasshopper. Yeah, I mean, there's so many lines from that movie. It's pretty amazing that 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 has still like what he was saying. Like that's a movie, you know, you can watch with your kids. Yeah, you know, because there's like not many shows or movies. Right. That, well, your show is Star Girl. Star, Star Girl is like that too. We're yeah. watching it with our three year old now. I don't know if that's totally right for her <laughs> age. I mean, she did get scared the last episode and need to sit in my lap. Yeah, but you know what? We're making an exception because it's me. Yeah, we can but, do that. Yes. yes, we are looking, we're constantly looking for good movies to watch uh -huh. with our kids. Like my brother just said, Mrs. Doubtfire, they watch that with their kids. And yeah, I don't think our daughter wanted to watch that though. Um, the Goonies, I think, would be fun. But yes, I mean, oh, you like Road Trip? Road Trip? Right? I don't think you can watch Road Trip Not, with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but. Um, but yeah, The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid. And if you haven't seen Cobra, uh, Cobra Kai, Kai, it's just. It if started you on YouTube Red, so it was kind of a little bit, it started on YouTube Red, so it's a little bit tricky to find. Yeah. Um, and then now they're putting it on um, it's all Netflix, Netflix and it is, it's so good. I mean, it's what, 32 years later, I think. Yeah, and yeah. so what they do now is they like literally it's like, so fun to they, see everybody. they have all the, you know, the all the kids back then are of course adults and they have Parents. their kids yeah. and their kids get into it a little bit and it's 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 really well done and if you're a fan of that era and movies from that time and who is it who is it well todd really is yeah. um if you think that's todd's <laughs> favorite movie you would be mistaken um because that is not his favorite movie it starts, with, starts with the top yeah yeah starts with the top <laughs> Ends with a gun. Anticipating <laughs> the uh, second one coming out. So, oh it's man, he can't even speak. He's like <laughs> so well, excited. I would ask that the whole thing. So, hey, let's yeah. continue. You know, yeah, yeah. Ralph. Yeah, we'll get to Tom Cruise and Bell Yeah, I yeah. think if, if Tom Cruise showed up on the Zoom call, I think my brother would. Oh, I get weak in the knees. I wouldn't know what to do. You know? He wouldn't know what to do. He wouldn't know what to say. Uh, uh, how to uh, respond. Uh, how to act. But I didn't you, you, you saw Oh, someone wants to know does Todd identify with Goose or Maverick? Or who do you or Ice Man? Well, you go, I mean, Maverick, obviously, the cool guy. Goose dies, so you, you want to finish the show, you want to keep things going. Stay alive. You know, who's the hero? Who's the real star? You know, he saves the day, he beats the Russians. You know, it's all good. <laughs> uh, uh, um, oh, okay. Um, well, the chicken, unfortunately, is taking a little bit longer than we anticipated, so you can see we're stalling for. Some time. So um, let me tell you about Carter when he was a little kid. He had a real no, problem. No, no. Do we um, have any questions that we can go to, Jill? Um, we, got, we have some more questions for Buddy the Cake Boss, but since he's gone. Oh, oh no. Okay. I'll try to answer for him. Answer them. Um, but no, I think since you started to talk about um, next week, like you said, so we're doing um, 
So it's actually with blueberries, we have our menu. It's going to be an herbed lamb chop served with a butternut puree and fresh blueberries. So that's going to be our recipe for next week. Um, for those of you that have been asking about the recipe for this week, we will be, um, we sent that out via email, but we're also going to post that on Facebook and so you can find that information. Um, and for those of you that are interested in the VIP table experience, we're going to be kind of doing it different each week, depending on um, kind of what the menu is, what the guest is. So um, each week might be a little bit different. So stay tuned for your, in your inboxes, we'll be sending out information about getting tickets. And so everybody knows the week that we have the Cheese Lady, which is August 19th, we're going to be doing that one a little bit different and hosting multiple people. So we're actually going to be doing the wine and cheese tasting pairing here at the winery. So we'll be selling tickets um, and we're going to open it up to larger, uh, to more than 10 people and more than, and then, you know, the two tables. And we'll be obviously safely social dis socially distanced um, so you can still enjoy the wine and the cheese. But here, and you'll kind of get to hear things from Tina as well as from Corbin, Cornell and Davi about that. So um, we'll definitely be changing things up a little bit each week, but you can kind of get a sense of, of what's going to be going on. Um, oh, and we're next week with the lamb chops and the BDX or, and the blueberries. For those that have been waiting for red wine, we're doing both the Pinot Noir and the BDX next week. Ooh, bold choice. Bold yeah. choice. I do like that. I feel like the Pinot Noir, I can, you know, sometimes... What? Drink a lot of it. Um, <laughs> like last night. Um, my, my family's in town. What am I supposed to say? No? Um, um, and then uh, we also have Sunny Anderson coming on. Yeah. Uh, a week She'll after. be so fun. She's amazing. <laughs> she's so fun. So cool. Um, yeah, she's, uh, um, she's a, a phenomenal chef. And, um, and then we're looking into a couple others. If you have suggestions, please send them out. Um, we're trying to get, uh, who are we trying to get right now? Um, Marcus Samuelson. Marcus Samuelson. Yeah. Um, uh, I've worked with him a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian Summerholder, which we're friends with, and he's just uh, producing a, um, a, bourbon. a bourbon right now. Uh, he's from much. Louisiana, so, and he's one of our buddies. And so uh, we're going to uh, hopefully bring him on here quite quickly. And um, yeah, so we got a lot of people coming up. So those Wednesdays, we're not going anywhere. We'll be here. Hopefully you guys can join us. And I think with that door slamming, that may be the chicken, which would be really good. Is it? Because we're almost because out of time Because we're here. like, oh. Oh, may, maybe, 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 maybe not. not yet. Maybe not. Hold on, we got chicken covered. Oh, we got, we got peaches. We got peaches. We got the peaches. We got the peaches. Got okay. the peaches. You want to show, hey, you want to show those peaches coming in? You can bring them right here. Yeah, yeah, those just peaches. pop. We have the beginning of dinner. Oh, Ooh, I love man. how charred those are. Yeah. How long did you keep those peaches in the park? Three hours. Three hours. <laughs> Three hours on a very low, wow. low heat. It's still so warm. <laughs> I know. It's so amazing. So, Carter, I want to know since we just had Buddy on. Am I going to start cooking? Are you going to bake us some, like, look, I don't know the first thing about baking. Us? I've tried a couple times and it's kind of failed miserably. <laughs> Um, yeah, you did. You did make me some chocolate covered, burnt chocolate covered strawberries. No, let's Day, not forget Sunday. about that Valentine's Day date we had. One time. Yeah, one one time. time. Exactly. I've cooked for you other times than that. That was you just have, but an it's over like, the top. It's now. usually a Valentine's Day because I'm like, can you please cook for me? <laughs> but you know. Um, but, oh, look at that look! No, you all see that look? True, it's true. I'm, <laughs> but I mean, you know. I, I think I just need to. Really big. I mean, I just redid the kitchen, just redid the basement. Oh, 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 here we go. Like the kitchen all chickens is crazy, man. <laughs> With wine in hand. That's right. That's right. right. Now, Cornell, okay, I know on. I'm a stickler with chicken. Did you put it back in the raw juices or it's all, oh, all you just cooked. baked it? Oh, what did you do cooked. to this? Okay. The chicken is cooked. Chicken it's shape, so. And it's back what? in the pan. <laughs> Cornell, I'm sorry. It's back that? in the pan that you cooked it in. That mm -hmm. you it's all been, marinated. It's all yep. been cooked. Keep keeping the same juices the whole time. And uh, you can see the kind of uh, burn, uh, not burn, but like roast it a little bit yeah. there. But now it's time for the plating, right? Okay. So let's get the part. The, the juices, right? you let's said, get to the fun part. Do you put wine in the juices? You know me. Oh, right? you do the olive oil. Of course, you add the wine. Yeah. And that's yeah. 
And those shallots, I'm sure, are made of seafood. Oh, yeah. So the shallots is a little roasted here. And like I mentioned uh, earlier on, we're going to add some of that roasted pine nuts as well. Oh, yeah. So that's going to go well with that uh, Chardonnay that we are serving here tonight. Nice. So let's get to Looks this. gorgeous. All right. Um, yeah, it's a plate. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I guess I'm getting. Cornell, you're gonna have to cook and talk. We're gonna have a little bit of cook and talk. Okay. We're gonna do this. Just plate one plate so we can see how it turns out. One plate. No, there's two. So let's do this quick. It looks like um with the yogurt. All right. So here we go with the yogurt. That's her. And I just added a little bit of. Um, your olive oil in there. There's no secret recipe. Uh, <laughs> no. Just fresh herbs. This, no, the ones that we had up here uh -huh. um, that we blended up oh. was the mint. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll the Dolly that. This one has the mint, uh, scallions, um, some flat leaf, parsley, uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, and uh, a little bit of lime juice. Oh, lime juice, yes. That's and we all just juice. mix that up. That's right. That wow. is okay. And then we're going to go Ooh, to the, the, the peach. And you guys are probably super hungry. There's a beautiful sweet char flash. That's right. So what I'm going to do is secret lime juice. Is, no, and then we're going to add a little bit of that stuff. Is it, is it, is it, this my finest? Here we go. Mm. Good presentation. So those pine nuts come up from the tree in the back, or you guys need to go this way? Oh, yeah. Yeah, where are they from? Like Turkey. Right outside? <laughs> Down with Bino. They're important. <laughs> nice. so, yeah. We, we have all sorts, of, all sorts of things growing there. Yes. So the pine nut is not something that comes with the recipe. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that oh, was so a good addition. Pine nuts are seriously great on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> Voila. I love that. That's all right. Like really yes. simple and easy. Wow. It's pretty and simple and easy. If you want to go catch chicken from South Africa, there you go. Ooh, Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the beauty of this again Thanks. is that. It was something that was local. Uh, we used the um, we used the peaches from what farm did we? we Gallagher, farm. Yeah. Gallagher Farm. Gallagher Farm. Gallagher Farm. Okay. Yep, and um, we tried to use them last week, but unfortunately, did we they use the ready. olive oils and. Uh, yep, we've got Fusini. the olive oil from Fusini okay. local. So we we're going all local here. All right. Um, I like how you're doing that card over there with mixing it all up. Need a little pour. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, soak it up. There we go. Mm. Oh my God. Like you, you know, is that good? Mm. Oh, are you so happy? Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so delicious. It smells. We're gonna get caught. It's like, oh my gosh. I love that fresh. Wait, um, so I want. I just want to know rice. about the peach. What do you want to know? I want to well, taste the peach. Well, should we mix? I mean, obviously we're mixing it all together, but okay. I can only get so much stuff in my mouth at one time. So. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Um. You know, mm -hmm. but, yeah, this is really good. oh my gosh, oh man. So, you know, when you've never had anything before, mm -hmm. I've never mixed chicken and a peach. That's, that's new to me. Are you happy about that? Yes, it? try yeah. that right now. That I, is so good. I, well, I think like everyone's trying. been going through all this. It's amazing putting the fruit with actually the protein mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. getting those different expressions of flavor that's really coming out. Like you never do, you never get those things happen. Well, okay. it's like. So, Carter's probably just really hungry, so you can tell me what you're doing. Well, it's that here. explosion from the peach, that ju those juices that. Well, you know. you're digging. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we got the lime juice and the olive oil. Yeah, everything is. Yeah, that's delicious. Oh, my God. I mean, okay. Chicken with everything, really tasty. Not bad. At all. all right. Really, really, uh, really good. When you have the peach into it, it's game changer. Mm -hmm. Right away. That peach is just like it's having nice that juice cooked. with that I like chicken. These little fried shallots on top. Yeah. Um, you guys, you knocked it out of the park one more time. 
Okay. Well done. Oh, yeah, wait, I have to you guys. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. Oh, 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 cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Well. Cheers. 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 So Cheers. you too can enjoy this as we set all up. Cornell, cook for you. Come see us. Um, hit up uh, Jill's email and join us. And we're going to be serving everybody out on the deck and uh, just beautiful. Which is Jill at BonoboWinery.com um, or reservations at BonoboWinery.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy Cornell, Dobby, thank you guys thank so you much for, for cooking. cooking. Buddy, You're King welcome. Boss, yes. we love you. Thank you so thank much you. for being on. for joining us. Guys. Next Wednesday, we're cooking up a feast and we've got the Cook Karate right. Kid. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> We'll spice it up. <laughs> spice, spice, Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your life. Peace. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Bye.